Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 9.3, Transformations of Quadratic Functions. We're going to get the day started off with some vocab words. The first vocab word being a transformation. A transformation is a movement of a figure on a surface. And that surface could be the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane has, or is what we've been dealing with for the past couple days, where it's the x-axis and the y-axis, and we've been graphing parabolas on them. Next vocab word is a translation. A translation is a type of transformation where the figure is slid from one position to another. So what will we be asked to do today? Well, let's take a look at this guy right here where y equals x squared plus k. Now if that k was 0, so if it was y equals x squared, we would be having this blue parabola which would go right through the origin and be a nice parabola for us. But now we would have an upward vertical translation if k was greater than 0. So if we had y equals x squared plus 4, we would have our parabola, our red parabola, which would be moved up. All right, so this red parabola is represented by k is greater than 0. Uh, any parabola that would be moved up, it could look something like this. y equals x squared plus 4. Now, a downwards vertical translation, though, if what? If k was less than 0. So if it was a negative number, if we were subtracting 5, subtracting 6, if we had y equals x squared minus 5, we would have this green parabola where it was moved down from the blue parabola. So what do these problems look like? We will be asked to describe how the graph is related to the graph of f of x equals x squared. So we're going to be des describing how this red equation is related to the graph of this black parabola. So this guy right here. Well, what happened? My black parabola is what they call a parent function where it goes through the origin. What did my minus 3 do to that parabola? It moved it down, correct? It translated, translated the graph down three units. It just moved it down three units. Now, what if we were subtracting or adding inside those parentheses? So notice how my letter now is inside my square. So if h is less than 0. So let's say if h was less than 0, let it be a negative 2, right? I would plug that h, in, my negative 2 in for h, and it would be a plus 2. So if it was y equals 8 or x plus 2, and then it was squared, since it would be plus, it would move it to the left. So it would be a translation to the left if we had a negative 2, plugging negative 2 in would make it a positive 2, right? Looking something like this. But we would have a translation to the right if h was greater than 0 because then it would just be h minus 4, h minus 5. So again, describe how the graph is related to the graph of f of x equals x squared. So f of x equals x squared is this guy running through the origin. Now I am subtracting 2. What happened to my red graph. As I subtracted 2, notice how I, when I subtracted 2 it was inside the parentheses. I moved it right. And how far did you move it? Right to units. Now, what if it is something like this? Again, we're describing the graph of here. Well, first thing to note is what does the minus 2 do to the graph? The minus 2 outside the parentheses will move it down. So it's translated down two units. Then what will the plus 3 do to my graph? The graph then will move it to the left three units. And now let's try another transformation, another vocab word. Our vocab word is dilation. A dilation is a transformation that alters the size of the figure, but not its shape. So here we are given y equals ax squared. Notice how that a is in front of the x squared. 
we will have a vertical stretch if this a if this a is greater than 1 so we could have negative 4 or positive 4 we could have negative 5 or positive 5 right that's the absolute value of a is greater than 1 notice on a vertical stretch how my parabola gets a lot skinnier a lot more stretched vertically imagine it going up faster than my blue parabola which is my parent graph now we would have a vertical shrink or compression if my a was between 0 and 1 the absolute value of a being between 0 and 1 so it could be a decimal it would be a fraction or a fraction smaller than 1 it would be 1 half or it would be 0 0.5 0 0.25 but hold on a second would it be a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink if it was 1.5 well 1.5 is bigger than 1 so it would be a vertical stretch so now let's describe what is happening to the graph if we have 1 half x squared well if it's 1 half x squared we have a vertical what we have a vertical shrink happening because it's getting bigger it's being shrunk or if you want to you can use compressed we're compressing it down from the top so it could be shrink or compressed whatever way you're more comfortable with now what happens if you think that if our a is negative right and now it doesn't have to be just negative one it could be any negative number well we would have a reflection whoops and that's still my pen we would have a reflection over the x-axis if a was negative so here notice how we have this g of x function is being negative it is flipped across it is reflected across this x-axis now we've been working towards this the whole lesson and it's our last vocab word which is vertex form vertex form all it is is an a that would be in front of your x or in front of your parentheses x minus h inside your parentheses that being squared and then plus k so this again is vertex form you will always have this x that x should always be there a h and k will all be some sort of number like one two three negative four negative half so now we are asked to describe how the graph is related to the graph of f of x equals x squared we are looking at this right here we'll start in the front what does this three do to the graph well the three vertically stretches the graph how about this plus four I know it's tricky to think about when but when you have a plus four inside those parentheses you are going to go to the left four units and then how about the minus eight outside of the parentheses because it is outside of the parentheses we're going to go down eight units because it is outside now we're looking at number two well if we look at number two closely and examine it does this look anything like this kind of sort of but what is this for this four is actually the k right and what kind of x squared do we have we have a negative x squared so when we have a negative x squared what happens well we are being reflected over the x-axis this is a positive k or a positive 4 so what does a positive 4 do it moves it up four units and that is all in vertex form and that does it for section 9.3 transformations of quadratic functions good day